The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first, as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, charts provide ways of visualising components and the associations between them. There are many different ways of visualising the connections between components in MaxQDA, and not all of them are called charts, but for simplicity we use the term chart as a catch-all name. Chapter 5 lists and describes them. In this video we show you a few to give you an idea of the range of ways to visualise the associations between components. Like maps and summaries, charts are different than other components in terms of actions. Because charts visualise other components, actions are taken on the components within them, not on the charts themselves, and they are used to visually interrogate and display components rather than to continue working on them. This video is in two parts. First, we look at the document portrait chart, the code line and the document comparison chart. And in the second part, we look at the statistic of document variables chart and the statistic of subcodes chart. Other videos in this series show other visualisations, such as the interactive word tree, tag clouds, maps and matrix browsers. The document portrait chart visualises coded segments as they've been applied to a document, based on the sequence in which they occur throughout the document, and the amount of data coded to each code. It relies upon having applied colour to codes, because the chart displays coded segments in a series of coloured dots. There are many possible uses of the document portrait, but I'm just going to show you two. First, let's look at this focus group transcript which has so far only been coded according to who is speaking. You can see in the document system that each participant has been given a different colour. And this is also reflected in the margin of the document. The coding of each speaker's contributions was achieved automatically when importing this document. And you can find out more about that in the MaxQDA help menu. After importing the document, I changed the colours of each participant because I wanted to be able to visualise the proportion of talk for each participant within the discussion. And the document portrait allows me to do that. So I'm just going to open it up. So here we can see that unsurprisingly the moderator, who has not been given a colour and therefore appears in grey, speaks throughout the discussion, but more at the beginning and the end. Lucas, whose contributions have been coloured blue, speaks a lot during the first half of the discussion, but less later on. So this chart is giving us a sense of both the sequence of participants' contributions throughout the document, and also the relative amount of each participant's talk. We can get a visualisation of the relative amount in a more easily comparable view by clicking on this button. So now we can see more easily that Lucas speaks more than any of the other participants including the moderator. There are various other buttons to choose from in the document portrait view. For example, this one changes the visualisation so that some of the dots appear white. This indicates where no codes have been applied to segments in the document. We can also change the visualisation to, to display nodes as circles rather than squares. And of course, we have the usual output options if we want to export this visualization outside of MaxQDA. I'll just go to another project to show you a different example of using the document portrait chart. In this project, we're also looking at a focus group discussion, but this time color has been applied to the conceptual codes, and I've colored those where negative feelings are expressed in red, and those where positive feelings are expressed in green. You can see that by looking at the codes in the code system. You can also see by looking at the margin in the document browser where the green and red codes occur. And you'll also see that in places, emoticodes have been used. 
So let's just open the document portrait chart. And this time you'll see that a lot of the chart is appearing grey, showing that most coded segments in this document have been linked to codes that have not been coloured, either green or red. Or in other words, are not explicitly negative or positive. We can also see that the negative codes have been used more often than the positive codes, and we can see where the emoter codes have been used. Again, I can see the relative amount of coded segments applied to the red, green and emoter codes in this view. I can change the nodes to make them circular. And I can also see when I go back to view the document in its entirety, where in the document coded segments have not been linked to any code. The code line is a chart that visualises how coded segments have been applied to paragraphs throughout one document. Like the document portrait chart, the code line relies on having previously applied colour to codes. You can see at the moment we're looking at George's interview transcript, and various colours have been applied to the codes as is visualised in the margin view. So I'll just open up the code line on George. I'll just accept the default for now. I'll talk about some of those options shortly. And first of all, I'll just reduce the size so that I can see the whole length of the document. You'll see that I've got codes appearing as rows and I can open up the hierarchies to visualize subcodes. And across the top, I've got a numbered column for each paragraph in George's document. And here we can see how the concepts represented by these codes appear throughout George's document. As is the case in many visualizations in MaxQDA, if I double click on one of the colored paragraphs, in the background, MaxQDA will show me that coded segment. The unit paragraph button toggles between displaying every paragraph separately in an equal size column in the table, as we have on view currently, and displaying column widths proportional to the length of the paragraph. So at the moment we can see each paragraph separately, and the colour is indicating where any sized coded segment within the paragraph has been linked to each code. In this project, in many instances, the coded segment is the whole paragraph. But even where the coded segment is smaller, the colour fills the whole paragraph column. We can see that by looking at the auto code for satisfaction option. Here, that code appears in paragraph 1 and here in paragraph 9 and paragraph 10. But when I retrieve this instance from paragraph 9 in the background, you will see that it's actually only applied to the word satisfaction, not the whole of paragraph 9. However, when we click on the unit paragraph button, we get a different display. This is a proportional view, so that the columns reflect the relative length of the paragraphs, and the colour indicates the size of the coded segments within the paragraphs. In the usual way, if we wanted to focus just on some codes, not all codes, then we could activate the codes we were interested in, I'll just activate day-to-day -day issues. And then when I ask to recalculate the chart or refresh it, I can choose only activated codes. And that filters the view so that we're only looking at the day-to-day -day issues group of codes. I'll just unactivate that group of codes and refresh again. And this time I'm going to aggregate on the first level. Now MaxQDA is only showing top level codes and provides a display for all the subcodes within the hierarchy at each row. The document comparison chart compares the coding of activated documents according to the color applied to codes and the paragraphs throughout the document. So it's like a combination of the document portrait and code line. So I'm back in the other project and I'm just going to activate all the focus group documents so that I can compare them using the document comparison chart. 
Remember that in this project, red has been applied to codes where negative expressions are in the data and green has been applied to the positive expressions. So in the document comparison chart, we can compare the occurrence of codes for positive and negative expressions across all five focus groups. You'll see that because I've activated the focus group documents, it's asking me if I want to focus on these. So I'll say yes. And you can see that the document comparison chart also displays as a table with activated documents in the rows and paragraph numbers in the columns, with the coloured bars showing where any red or green coloured codes have been applied in paragraphs in each document. Remember that there's lots of grey because we've only used the red and green for particular codes where negative or positive comments are expressed. If I want to focus just on some codes, I'll go for the broad brush codes, then I can activate those. I've still got my focus group documents activated. So now when I ask for the document comparison chart, I can say that I do want to focus only on activated documents and codes. And this time we're focused only around the codes which appear in the broad brush group. 